It's all the the uh, Eye of the Beholder, that documentary of the Dungeon Dragons art. They interview. Yeah. By the end, you get to the new artist. P U man. I want to go back. <laughs> yeah. They need you. I want to go back. Shot. Yeah, that'd be amazing. But uh, I, that's what I think you capture in your art. You, you come up. It has that punk rock, um, very you, raw. Man. Yeah, like with the as we just saw up here. It's just like. Uh, yeah, somehow you captured that early artwork. It's almost like, I don't know, uh, Jim Henson brought these demons to life with. Ooh, uh, that'd be fun. With uh, your artwork. So, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Some freaky Muppet Muppets, coat. dude. Muppet coat. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I was coming up, like, I mean, when I was first decided to be a pro artist, I think it was like the mid-90s. And like, by that time, um, you had already like these um, airbrush artists in the late seventies, I guess, in the early eighties, which is fun. It's fun when it's whatever, I guess we're making glistening cherries or teas or whatever, or um, whatever, like they're dripping with water. But mm. there's a point like where um, hyper realism just gets boring to me. And then um, there was, that was going on with like TSR stuff, like D and D was, was just going from um, this like raw DIY sort of like, um, I don't know, rough, rougher, um, rougher on the edges style to like way more, they were able to be able to afford much more um, polished artists. And um, at the same time, those artists just did nothing for me. I was like, so bored by them. I was like, okay. So then, then I was realizing that like half the reason why I was into certain games was because of the art. And I was like, okay, so I need to look for that, that aspect of the game. And they're like, so it's not actually playing the game that I cared about. It was more like which which games had the best art at that point. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I ended up looking at Warhammer. Was because like Warhammer, honestly, like in the late eighties, Warhammer's art was out of control and mind blowing. It was like they had, they they picked their um their art director John Blanche, like would basically like pick um pick really um interesting artists to do illustrate the um products and so like the products might not be great, but the art was fantastic and worth every penny. <laughs> so that's basically yeah. the way I viewed it. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Warhammer and the miniatures, I ordered on your last Kickstarter the your little lead oh. miniatures like that. What's the guy? The brute. Stuff and like they that. never I, showed up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now you got them, right? You got them? Uh, no, we're still waiting for them. <laughs> I'm just saying that's why I used to love because. Yeah, we never used to play Dungeons and Dragons. It was the artwork that got us into oh. it. And I used to have all the little miniatures. I don't know where they are. But that's when I <laughs> saw you house. had those again. I was like, oh, these are awesome. Because they're like, yeah. yeah, your characters come pewter. to life. Pewter. Yeah, they're pewter. Yeah, they're cool. pewter. But that's half the reason why I um, did metal figures was because they reminded me of like <clears throat> what I was attracted to as a kid. And I was like, well, it would be way better to do them in metal than it is in plastic. So many miniatures are in yeah. plastic now. And I'm like, it has no nostalgic factor for me at all. I want the pure lead ones. That <laughs> yeah, it's got me. a good taste. That are this seep into my hands as I hold them. <laughs> Bruh. Well, oh. if, if you're not, you know, if you're too cool for Warhammer, and you still have all those little toys, and I can give you an address if you want to send it over. <laughs> I can pick that up for you. He likes the art still. Oh yeah, yeah. you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs>